Sheriff Braden, I'm so glad you're here. I'll come right out. You said on the telephone that you had some evidence concerning the murders? Yes, some quite shocking evidence, Sheriff. Please follow me. And you see it, you'll know why I'm so upset. But I have to show it to you. It's the only right thing to do. Where is it? Come, I'll show you. My son's dark room. I was never in here until yesterday. Brace yourself, Sheriff. You're in for a terrible shock. I'm afraid nothing shocks me anymore. But still, this will be something new for you. Nicole Hendricks. Vicky McAllister, Judy Marino. My son Harry took these photographs, Sheriff. He developed them here in his own dark room. They prove he's a peeping Tom. They don't necessarily prove he's a murderer, if that's what you're worried about. He'll lose his job at the school. He might even go to jail. But we won't be able to keep him there very long, unless he confesses to something worse than we question him. Oh, I know he's not a murderer, Sheriff. My son Harry appreciates feminine beauty too much to ever want to destroy it. Don't you think his photographic artistry amply demonstrates that fact, Sheriff? I'd say it demonstrates a perversion. After looking at this stuff, how can you be so convinced he's not the killer we're after? Because. Take a look, Sheriff. Let's have a nice talk. <laughs> Are you going to turn me in? Not if you do what I ask. <laughs> All these years you were a strict, God-fearing police officer, pious and righteous. Huh? But underneath your passions were simmering, weren't they? The sluts, teasers, flaunting their bodies. They had to be purified. It was sinful and evil. I agree with you, Sheriff. In fact, there's one more I wanted to punish. Who? Darling Vicky. Vicky? Why? She's sinful. Oh. She must be purified. Right after she turns 18, eight days from now. <laughs> oh, you better tell him why, Mama, so he don't blow it by going after her before the deadline. The deadline? What deadline? There's a good reason why I mentioned Vicky's 18th birthday, Sheriff. Her parents set up a trust fund for her of half a million dollars. It does not become hers until she turns 18. But it is an irrevocable trust. All that money reverts to the state if she dies before that. But if she dies after she turns 18, it all goes to her invalid grandmother. And by the terms of Elvira's will, if she dies while she's in my care, and you inherit the half million dollars. How <laughs> bright of you, Sheriff, you figured it out. <laughs> Harry and I were in a quandary as to how we would do away with Vicky without casting too much suspicion on ourselves. But you will help us solve that little problem now, won't you? Won't you? Yes. I keep thinking there must be some way I can help. I mean, I know all the girls. Maybe I'm overlooking something obvious. And if I could think of it, I could help put you on the right track. Thank you. I hate to sound cynical, Marie, but... But very seldom are cases I guess solved through hunches or some half-remembered clue. Random murder is especially difficult to solve. I can imagine. You don't know who you're trying to defend yourself against. You don't become a victim by something you willfully did to the perpetrator. He's just out there prowling with his knife in anyone's fair game. Primarily females. Look, 
Look, I know you're worried, and maybe you can help. Do you know if any of the girl's boyfriends or ex-boyfriends might have any psychiatric problems? Not that I know of. I could check the school records for you. Already done. No help. I was hoping you might know something that didn't get into the records. You know, homicidal tendencies often go untreated because people try so hard to cope and appear normal, even when they're becoming unglued. Why would these girls, these young high school majorettes, be prime targets for such a sick person? They're high profile. In a small town like this are about as high profile as you can get. Their thing is to look pretty and sexy in front of a stadium full of people. You know, the killer's not only gratifying his own warped ego, he's punishing the girls for being young and desirable enough to turn him on. And underneath it all, sex is probably ugly to him. We're looking for a man turned insane by guilt and his own repressed sexual desires. So terrifying. Not half so terrifying as what he did. Remember that. And please, take precautions for yourself. You're just as pretty as any of the girls, and very closely connected with them in the killer's mind. Excuse me, are you Lieutenant Martell? Yes. You have an urgent phone call from Sheriff Brady. Thank you. You're Jeff Holloway and Vicki McAllister found Judy's body. Uh, the poor kids. According to the sheriff, they're in bad shape, in shock, blaming themselves. I still have to talk to them yet. Why'd you let our two witnesses go, Braden? I saw them leaving just as we pulled in. I questioned them personally. No need for you to duplicate the effort. Besides, they were so shaky, I thought it would be best if they went home. With no escort. We have each other. Look, Jeff is going to drive Vicky to her car in the school lot. Then he's going to follow her home. How can you call yourself a sheriff? They shouldn't be driving. You should have never let them on their own at a time like this. What if one of them cracks up? You worry too much about the wrong thing, Markell. Thank you. 